One of the things I get asked quite a lot while I've been doing these introduction videos is how do you get RetroPie to boot directly into a single ROM? So like myself, if you've got an arcade machine or if you've got any other kind of setup, maybe one of them SNES boxes that you can put your RetroPie in, you might want it to boot straight into a Super Nintendo or arcade machine. Well, I'm about to show you how you can do that. And you can see from the footage that's running now, it just runs and it boots directly into Super Mario Kart. So once this is booted, we're going to go over to the computer and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your system do that. So here we are back over the good old favourite PC. I bet you're all getting sick of seeing this backdrop now. But the first thing that we need to do is we need to know the names of the ROM that we want to go and boot straight into. And to do that, we open up Explorer. An explorer page like this go into the bar there and it's backslash backslash retro pie and then you go into the roms and in this instance we're going to load up a super nintendo one so we double click it now in here is the roms so for a, a super nintendo files it's dot smc so you look for dot smc files now you'll notice in here that we've got super mario kart with brackets u with a, a, a exclamation mark there now this system doesn't work with any fancy characters or the brackets or the exclamation mark. So you need to go in and you need to alter this. So it's it's just an easy file name for it to use. So in this case, I've changed it to supermariocart.smc. All one word, nice and simple, nice and straightforward. Now that will mess around with any of the scrapings that you've done uh, for your for your for your system. So if you've scraped any of the files and you change the file name, the the, the images and the videos will disappear. So once you've changed it in there, the Super Mario Kart.smt, you'll find this file called Games List. Now, if you right click and open that with a program called Notepad++, and now again, this looks more complicated than it really needs to be, but you're looking, if you, you can search, if you press Control and F, you can, you can search for stuff. And you're looking for the original file name. So you'll notice here how I've changed it to Super Mario Kart, all one word, .smc. And then when you save it, file save it'll save the uh, scrape details so you don't lose any of the video or the images that's by the by that's something you could do later on once you've got it working but that's just to let you know that's how you sort it out so once you've changed the name of the rom and you've got it to something nice and simple we then need to use a file we then need to use a, a program called winscp now we've used this before now what this does this gives you access to the actual sd card while it's switched on in your Raspberry Pi so you can get to all the files that you need to alter. I need to do an update, you see, but we'll uh, we'll do that a little bit later on. So you log in using the IP address of your Pi, which uh, is probably the same as when you booted it up, but if it's changed, you can have a look on the uh, Raspberry Pi, it'll tell you. But in my instance, it's 192.168.0.125. Pi. Raspberry, because I haven't changed any of the uh, credentials. And now you need to go and find you need to go and find a file that you're going to have to alter. Now again, this sounds complicated, but it really isn't. If you use the up arrow here, uh, in fact I'll make it smaller because I'm going to put all the the, the the path names at the bottom here. And we'll get rid of these. If you use the up arrow here, you need to go to the root of the actual SD card. So this is the root of your SD card. Then you need to go to opt retropie configs all and in here is a file called autostart.sh now this is the file that we're going to alter and you can do that through winscp if you use the right mouse button and edit it opens up this now there's not a lot in there that, at the moment but what's that what that's doing is it's telling uh, your raspberry pi just to boot emulation station but we don't want it to do that we want it to boot into a rom so we're just going to comment that out by putting a hashtag in there so that tells it that tells the system basically to ignore what i'm going to put in now i'm going to copy and paste a a command in here and i'd recommend you copy and paste it in now, i'm going to put this into the description below because if you get a space in the wrong place or you put a, a capital letter where it's not or anything like that then it's not going to work so i'm going to talk you through what this is doing to the best of my knowledge because i don't know everything I've, I've just figured this out reading through forums and stuff like that so i've uh, copied and I copy and paste it from the description underneath it'll make life a lot easier for you so 
what this is doing this is telling uh, the actual Raspberry Pi to open up this run command file here and that run command is just basically telling it to run emulation station and, and, and all the cores and everything like that so it'll run that file then it'll come back to this bit of code it's then telling it it's going to look for this syst so it says sys it's got to look for this system so you put your system names in there if it's a, a, a NES ROM you put under you put on uh, lowercase NES if it's a Game Boy ROM you put lowercase GB if you're unsure if you look in your ROM lists here on your Raspberry Pi they're all here so if you want to play a Game Gear game you write Game Gear if you want to play an arcade game you put arcade uh, PC Engine PSX bad bad about all that kind of good stuff it's all in there then you put the little squiggly line slash forward slash retro pie forward slash roms forward slash snes again so that in there is going to be the uh system name i spelled that wrong but there you go so rom system name forward slash rom name then you put the ampersand ampersand space emulation station so this is going to be in the comments description below guys so just as an example if i wanted to load up uh super mario kart like i showed you in the introduction the code that i will put in there is this there you go so you go so it goes to this file zero dash uh, underscore sys so underscore space snes because that's the system i want it to load up and then the, the rom that i want it to load up is this here now this is why i mean it's important that you kind of get the uh the rom name as as, as simple as you can because if you if you start putting in brackets or if you start putting in the square brackets and stuff like that then you've got to start messing around with backslashes and everything and it just makes life a lot difficult for you and it's not what it needs to, it, it doesn't make it easy so this is the easiest way i've found to do it so once you've got that in there remember spaces all that kind of good stuff then if you put your uh hashtag emulation station in there then it's just going to ignore that emulation station in there what this is doing this ampersand by the way this is telling the, the system that when you quit out of super mario kart rom just to load emulation station up for you so it waits until you quit out of that to load emulation station and i'll show you that when we go back over to the uh, to the arcade machine so then you click start and uh, then you click the save button up there jobs are good exit out of it exit out of it so now we're going to go back over to the arcade machine and we're going to have a better look at what I've just shown you. So we've just rebooted the system there and what, obviously what that's doing is it's, it's rebooting it. It's loading up all the uh, files and systems and stuff. Uh, and like I say, I'm going to put up a video shortly telling you how to get rid of all that text, how to get rid of the rainbow if you wanted to make a complete arcade uh, uh, experience there. So it's loading up RetroPie and then what it'll do is it'll give you back a screen and it'll give you the screen saying that it's loading up the, uh, the emulator. Go, it's loading up Super Mario Kart using that emulator in the brackets. And then the game loads up. It, it really is as simple as that. But it's getting that code correct. You've got to remember to put the correct code into the into that file to make it work. Because if not, it just won't. If you get a space in the wrong place, then, then, then you've had it. So I'm going to put in the description below the code that you just need to copy and paste and put straight in. And then when you quit out of it, like you would any other game, when you start and select then it boots back into emulation station it gives you the uh the the folder that you're used to so there you go simple as that if you need any more help with anything if you want me to go through anything else or if you've got any more ideas for anything that you want to know give me a shout but if not thanks for watching noob game reviews and i'll see you next time